Okay, welcome to another video. So today we're not really going to be focusing on a distribution as such. Instead, we're going to focus our attention onto a gnome extension called Material Shell, which I've heard and read quite a lot about on these past couple of days, and I've been meaning to get around to checking it out. So that's what we're going to do for this video for the very first time. Now, as long as you're running GNOME, you can go ahead and use this yourself, but you need to be using at least version 3.34. So there's a few ways you can install it. Now, the first way, which is to install it from GNOME extensions, is probably the easiest because it will work across pretty much all of the distributions. But if you're on Arch or Fedora, you can install it through the package managers DNF or Yay. And then, of course, to get the most up to date version, you can jump over to GitHub. Now, reading the website, there appears to be quite a lot of unique and interesting features that have all been wrapped into one extension, which has the potential, from what I've read, to pretty much change the entire way you use your GNOME desktop. So some of these features are the spatial model, which is a natural and predictable organization where all windows are organized in a grid. So the interface is designed to give an at a glance view of the spatial model state and allow you to navigate with a mouse or on a touchscreen. Unfortunately, I don't have a touchscreen that we can use for this video, so we can't check that out, which is a bit annoying because I'd be interested to see how you'd interact with everything with the touchscreen. But nevertheless, tiling. So it has Windows tiling baked straight into it as well. So tiling engine automatically arrange the applications window in a predictable and mutually non-overlapping disposition. You would also have persistence, so that will help you retrieve your favorite layouts and Windows organizations after a reboot. And of course, there are some keyboard shortcuts for you to interact with it as opposed to just the mouse and touchscreen. So I do believe we can jump into the hotkeys from there. So we might keep this web page open so we can see what's what. I'm going to imagine they will have a section in the settings of the actual extension itself, though, that's going to have all of these hotkeys. So what we're going to do is jump over to the extensions website, type in material shell, and it'll be the very, very first result that you get. And we're going to go ahead and install. Okay, so it's auto, it's already changed everything up from what we just saw. So we have a left panel still, so that's replaced the Ubuntu dock on the left. And then we have a panel up the top. To the right, I do believe this is a layout switcher. It is indeed. We shall go through all of that in just a moment. And then to the left, we have a little plus button, which is going to open up, okay, a new sort of application launcher. So if we were to open up files, it would then open this up in a full screen view, which I guess you can just switch to and from your Windows title bars like that. Okay, that's pretty nice. And it has a nice smooth animation from left to right. So let's check out this bar now. So on your left panel here, it's moved all of your sort of system tray, clock, battery, etc., all, all the way to the bottom, as opposed to being at the top right on your standard GNOME desktop. Now at the top, you have the search button which is going to open up basically the overview of GNOME. And then if we was to type something like get it and hit enter, it would then open up that application. And of course, we are in a particular view at the moment. So we will go through every view and see how it organizes everything one by one as well. So we then have a little plus button here. So I guess pressing that will then open up another fresh workspace, I'm going to call that. Again, with the same application launcher with the search bar at the top. So let's open up the Ubuntu software store. Okay, it's not open it up. Let's just click that and see if that wants to open it up. There we go. I think that might be a snap, actually. That might be why that software store took so long to open. Okay, so it now gives you a little icon there of the current window that is focused. So let's say if we go into a different window in here and open up... Let's open up Firefox once more and then go back. So it's given you like a sort of a world web kind of icon there. I thought it might have given you the actual Firefox icon, but it doesn't appear to be at least in this theme that we've got. Okay. Right. So I do believe that's pretty much the basics of the layout. So now let's check everything else out. So we're currently in a full screen view for each window that opens. So let's say we wanted to switch to this window snapping kind of view, which is going to do it side by side. Can we use a drag and drop with the mouse? We can indeed, that's pretty handy. And can we have it specific to each workspace? So on this workspace, we're on the split. Can we go down here and have it in full screen? Still, we can indeed. So I can see that being very useful. Let's say you've got 
your calendar open on one pane here as well as your email client and then you have say LibreOffice Writer in your full screen view here you could then just jump in between them and do your work like that and that would be very handy if you've only got a single monitor as well so perfect for a laptop actually so let's see what the keyboard shortcuts are to see how easy it is to navigate without using the touchpad now so let's go back over here we'll go through all the extension settings in a moment as well so here we go hotkeys so super and w to navigate to the upper workspace so i guess these are workspaces on the um, left here and then super a and d so it uses sort of like the uh, gaming keys w a s and d so super a and d will focus the window from the left of the current window so let's give that a go so we are on the very left so let's go for the right one which will be super and d there we go and again brilliant and then when you've got more than one window on one thing it will then go between them windows like kind of like that i guess well that's really cool so i'm using the um, upwards and down as well right so let's just try some little workflows out so we've got a two panel sort of view here and we've got let's imagine we've got an email client now let's imagine we've got writer office just underneath this so we've got an email client and our calendar in this view and then we need to quickly reference something out of this email into a document like so and then we could just go w s w s okay that's a pretty nice sort of default keyboard shortcuts i'm sure you can edit them but as someone who quite often has his hand on the sort of w a s and d position i could get quite used to that so again w super and s will go down super and w will go up and then super s and a will be your note super what is it super d and a so super d and a will be your left to right motions in your windows okay that's very cool and then of course to kill an application it will be super and q so let's kill writer get it no we are currently in firefox so if we wanted to kill get it we go to the right which is super and d and then super and q like so perfect and again what that will then do when you're in the split view which is what we are currently on it will then to the right of the window that's not got anything there it will have the sort of application launcher once again with the search bar as well and then again you could just jump into files hit enter and that will open it up in the split view that's really really quite cool the way it does that okay let's check out another view right so this appears to be a different kind of tiling so let's check out how this all works now so let's open up a terminal perfect so that's now tiling things like sort of to the right of a sort of horizontal there let's go again nice so that will tile things like so so then let's quit a few of these and again that can be independent of a workspace so on this workspace here ah we do have the firefox icon there as well so we can still be in the full screen or whatever view that we want to be in here and then jumping up here we can have it in there that's really cool so does that okay so then pressing that plus has opened that up again to a fresh new one and then let's also open up a terminal again nice and then if we go back so this is how you're going to go between your workspaces uh, your windows focus and unfocus when you don't want to use super a and w okay that's probably my favorite sort of grid so far or layout so then we have that looks like a little airplane so i'm going to imagine this is going to be floating or some just yep yeah, looks like a floating window to me and uh, that should be resizable it is indeed one thing I didn't check out while we was in the um, sort of tiling view here is I wonder if we can resize it with just a simple mouse drag and drop. Can we get a little arrow? There we go. No, so that could be something that hopefully they could implement in the future because it would be really handy to be able to resize the windows with your mouse as well. But so far I'm really enjoying this. Right, what we're going to do then is close a lot of this up. Cool. So then when you've got nothing on the screen, your default sort of empty workspace is going to be the full screen application launcher. Now let's go into the extensions package. Do I have the extensions package on this minimal install? I don't. So what we're going to quickly do is open up a terminal and install GNOME Tweaks. Because I want to check out the actual settings of this now. Because I do believe I read somewhere that you can have gaps with your tiling. <clears throat> okay, let's open up Tweaks. 
and let's see what some of the settings that we can do are. So if we go into the actual extension settings here, material shell, press that little cog, and let's move this to the left to get the full screen kind of larger window for that. Brilliant. So in global settings, you can change the theming. So we're currently on dark. They also have a light, which uh, is not my cup of tea. I'm not really a light theme guy. But again, if you like light themes, you'll be happy to have that all baked within the actual settings of the extension. And in primary, which has changed the color to a blue. But I do believe that might correspond with the primary color there. I could be wrong. Let's go back to dark and change our primary color. So at the moment, our search button is blue. So I'm going to guess if we were to change this to red, it would then change that to red. It does indeed. Okay, I'm going to leave it on the red. I quite like that. Okay, so now we have panel sizing. So as a default, it's 48 in size. It doesn't appear to have a different size for both panels. So it looks like they're all within this one sizing. So let's give it a go. So let's go for a lower. Oh, it doesn't want to do that. I think we might have our first crash of the video. Yeah, it's kind of crashed on there. It's not. The and now the um, extension's reloading. Okay, hopefully that has actually worked. So let's go back into tweaks now. So we do have a little error message here, but this could just be Ubuntu playing up. So we're not going to worry about that too much. Let's just close that and reload the extensions here. Oh, we've got it here. Let's just close this a minute. There we go. Right, let's get back into those settings and carry on where we left off. All right, let's drag that back there like so. So it has made it go smaller. So hopefully now that it's sort of refreshed itself, we can actually there we go brilliant and as you can see both panels are changing their size there so that's basically like a global panel size you don't have individual sizing for each panel which is not too bad to be fair i'm going to leave it on size 38 so what else have we got panel opacity so we can change the sort of transparency of the panels so let's chuck uh, 75 on here so at the moment it's quite a dark color if this works it will sort of go a different color foxes it will go a different color and you'll see a bit of the wallpaper shine through there we go so that's worked very easily we then have surface opacity which will change the opacity of panels or other ui elements so let's just chuck that on 75 as well nice we can also blur the background so let's get a bit of blur and we can get some cycle through windows action but i'm not too worried about that but if you did want to know you can cycle back to the first when trying to navigate past the last window Oh, that could be quite interesting then. So let's give that a go now. So what we've done is we've enabled this. So the last window here is currently GNOME. So what that should do then is if we press Super and D, we should be able to get to the terminal. And then if we press Super and D again, it should go straight back to Material Shell. Right, so it will then go to One Plus. So let's do that again. So we could press a plus button or the enter and then it would open it up but then we could go d again and again and it'll bring you straight back to the first one in your window actually that's not too bad i might leave that there and it might even be quite useful for workspaces so let's enable that with workspaces as well okay so shortcuts so you do have a little place here where you can edit the default shortcuts but for the most part i'm going to leave them by the defaults because they seem pretty sane and like i said I often will have my left hand always sort of near the W, A, S, and D area anyway. So I can kind of deal with that. So to move windows to different workspaces, let's have a look. Move the current window left. So move the current window to an upper workspace. Let's say we wanted this window on this workspace. So it would be Super Shift and S. So Super Shift S. Brilliant. So now. That's really cool because we are currently in the full screen view here. Let's say if you very quickly wanted to see something kind of more of a full screen view and you've got the full screen view enabled in here, but you're currently in the sort of tiling view in here, you could then just go boom. And then there you go, you've got your full screen application. And now say you want the application open again on the same screen, but in your tiling mode, boom. That's really cool. I'm really enjoying that. Okay, very nice indeed. So where's our um, GNOME tweak settings gone? getting too excited right okay so that's all the sort of shortcuts there so layout we appear to have some additional layouts that we can enable so i'll do that towards the end and we'll have a very brief look at all of them so what i want to do then is jump into the tiling settings and let's see what we can do with the gaps now in order to get some gaps around the borders of the windows when it's in the tiling view so by default it's on zero i'm going to chuck an eight there and i'm also going to 
enable that and chuck an eight there as well right i'm not sure whether this will work out of the box but let's give it a go without a reboot we're not in the tiling view are we so let's go back up here there we go perfect as you can see there we've done it we didn't need to log in or log out it's happened pretty much instantly and as you can see we've got some gaps around the windows now so if we open up another in window as you can see gaps all around very nice indeed i'm really liking this so far and of course we can just super and queue that all out of the way brilliant right what i want to do now then is check out just sort of how crazy we can go with the workspaces on the left here and see how these other work uh, layouts work as well so let's jump into a different workspace now and let's open up maybe i shouldn't have downloaded the minimal install maybe we should have went crazy and downloaded the full install okay so it kind of doesn't look like gnome until you press super and then you're very quickly reminded that you are still in gnome because you get to the sort of overview here that we're all going to be familiar with but other than that you could almost be convinced that this is an, sort of a, a desktop environment of its own to be honest with you right let's add another workspace let's go for firefox and let's go for files and let's go for one more and let's just get a terminal open there right so what i wanted to check out now is the cycle to the last one so again it's super and s i do believe it is indeed so once we get past this space it then should cycle all the way back to the first workspace perfect i'm really liking this so now let's open up some more programs in this sort of tiling view so let's go for a terminal in here again and see how that's going to arrange that so that's opened it up the one that we've currently got so if we can just move this up now with super shift and w all the way to the top bang and it's tiled it perfectly with the gaps and it just fluid animations are quick i'm really really enjoying this right so we wanted to check out some final layouts before we wrapped it up there i've also taken a screenshot of the ram usage before i actually installed this because i'm quite intrigued to see how much this might affect your ram usage at a fresh boot <clears throat> So let's go back into the tweaks now and go back into our gnome extension settings we might have it even open somewhere here we go so let's go into layouts so by default your default ones are and you can change the default layout so the default is maximized which that means is when you open a new one the default layout is going to be maximized but say you wanted the default layout to be the um tiling that we're currently on on this window here workspace here nope I'm losing track of my workspaces anyway let's say you wanted your default workspace to be the tiling one so what you would do then is go into your default layout and chuck that on I do believe it's called half so that's now on half so if we open up a new workspace and then open up let's say files okay I can see that it hasn't actually taken effect there it has now though so as you can see it's now working with the default tiling workspace so if we open up files and even this sort of shadow behind it is also kind of tiled in a way that's pretty cool and then again let's open up a terminal so as you can see you can really really granularly control how you're actually going to interact with your desktop here i really dig it okay let's check out some of these additional workspaces anyway so the default ones of course are maximized split float and half we also have half horizontal which will tile windows horizontally and we have a tile vertically so let's check all of these ones so let's enable all of this so we have a ratio one as well which will set the size of according to the ratio value at default is 0 0.62 we're going to leave that like that we then have a grid simple which is split screen undirectionally according to screen ratio let's go for that one as well and then we have simple horizontal and simple vertical so let's enable all of these and we're just going to cycle through them one by one now so we're on the full screen which is maximize split is up next which is going to be pretty much a standard window snapping side by side now let's go to oh wow look at that i like that that's really cool so let's say we wanted to open up another thing how is that going to organize another terminal there nice that's really cool okay let's go to the next one okay i think we've seen that one already and that's pretty similar to the one we just saw okay so this appears to have a more sort of horizontal split there with a load of windows split vertically at the bottom there so if we open up another terminal it's going to yep very nice and i do believe this is the ratio view according to the ratio and again drag and drop you should be able to move and resize things again it would be cool if we could resize it properly with a mouse 
that would be very cool and then back to the floating which means you can grab something move it wherever you want and then let's just jump straight back into a different tiling view brilliant right what we're going to do is check out the perseverance which um, I do believe that's what they call it which is where it saves your sort of desktop layout so we're going to do a fresh reboot see if it how it does actually do that sort of layout remembering and then we're going to do one final reboot to check out the RAM and then we're going to wrap it up there okay so we've just booted back up and this is how it's going to remember things so it doesn't automatically open everything which is probably quite handy actually because it might send send your sort of startup time a bit crazy but what it does is it remembers which applications were open and then gives you a little sort of icon there and it will do that for every application across all of your workspaces so it can get pretty crazy and then you could click things one by one and it would open that up like so brilliant right what we're going to have to go ahead and do is close all of this and then get a fresh fresh ram reading at boot because i don't want to sort of give it any handicaps from when we didn't have the application installed but we will compare the ram usage before and after so as i say i've already took a before shot so i know how much ram we were using before we installed the extension and that is all i have done on this fresh install of ubuntu we've only only installed the extension as well as htop and chrome gnome shell so nothing else has been altered so let's close all of this now and there's a lot there probably is a way to close all of your oh we can just do super and q as well can't we there we go there's probably a way that you can do a close all if you want to set the keyboard shortcuts up but that's been quick enough. Right, I'm going to pause the video here and we're going to come back and see how much RAM we are using at boot and then compare it to before we installed this extension. Okay, we're back. So let's, uh, let's remember the terminal was open, which is handy because that's what we're going to use anyway. So let's go straight to HTOP and I'm going to give it a few seconds, perhaps about 30. Once it gets to uptime of 30, I'm then going to leave it and we're going to take the RAM reading from that. So it's currently on 1 GB and we're fast approaching the sort of 30-ish seconds that I had it on so i think we're going to look at about 1 gb there i'm not sure if it's going to get any lower let's go to memory and see what's taking that up so name shell is at the very top there okay so i do believe that's given us a couple of extra mb at boot so let's check out what we was on beforehand so i have taken a screenshot i hope i have saved it so if we go into pictures we should have a screenshot somewhere of before we've done anything so as you can see by default with an uptime of about 39 seconds that's why i let the um original the, the second window go up by about 30 seconds we was on 800 megabytes of ram at boot so we're looking at a, a, a slight increase there of having that extension running so as as i said we was on 800 at boot before and after we was hovering around the 1 gb size so i think it's worth the additional overhead there in ram because it's not too crazy and again i reckon if i had done another reboot i'd probably get it even lower than that in fact i've got an idea because we rebooted in the terminal that meant that it's, it tried to remember the window that was open so what i'm going to do is reboot in the gui and see if that changes anything because then it won't be trying to remember any layouts perhaps that's the better way of doing it so let's do that now okay so we've just gotten back from a fresh reboot so it's not tried to remember anything including the terminal that we had open when we reboot so now let's open up a terminal open up htop and already it is lower so it definitely did affect the ram reading that we just took so we're going to throw that one out and we're going to judge it from here so already yeah much better so you're looking at roughly about 95 megabytes extra there although it has just dropped down i'm going to say about 90 megabytes which to be fair when you consider how many additional features you do get within that app um, extension that's nothing really when you consider everything that it's doing so final thoughts then this could be the extension that gets me back onto gnome desktop full time to be honest with you i think this is brilliant i definitely re recommend people trying it out so i'll leave a link in the description to the material shell website Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and join the Discord. There'll be a link in the description. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.